on a busy factory line. One reach toward a spinning roller suddenly turns into a powerful pull toward the machine. Never ever guide or straighten moving sheet material with your hands near a calendar in feed. Keep your body outside the nip zone and use poles, clamps, or fixed guides instead. Calendar rollers use friction at the nip point to grip and pull sheet material through at constant line speed. If a loose edge or fold is caught, the rollers turn that sheet into a pulling strap, drawing any attached material steadily into the infeed with the same constant force the machine applies to the product itself. Treat every calendar in feed like a powered grip. Keep hands out, use tools and guards, and rely on lockout before getting close to moving sheet. In a cramped loading yard, a towering forklift load starts to sway, then suddenly tips into the narrow space beside it. Keep people completely out of the fall zone of elevated forklift loads. Travel with forks low, stabilize and secure tall stacks, and only move through tight areas with controlled speed and proper spacing. Carrying a tall, heavy stack high on the forks raises the center of gravity and makes the load more sensitive to bumps and small turns. A slight shift can push the stack off-center, and gravity will pull the stack down in an arc off the forks, creating a fall zone directly beside the mast. Treat every raised forklift load like a suspended wall. Lower it, secure it, clear the sides, and keep pedestrians out of the path where a falling stack would land. Inside a cramped wash bay, a front loader rolls forward and suddenly fills the entire space with moving steel. Never, ever move heavy machinery into a confined or occupied wash bay. Clear the zone, control entry, and use a spotter before the machine even crosses the threshold. A front loader is heavy, slow to stop, and has poor close-up visibility, especially on wet floors. In a tight bay with walls and equipment on all sides, its momentum has nowhere to go, so any misjudged movement or late braking pushes the bucket and chassis directly into whatever is in front of it. Treat wash bays like no-go zones for live machines. Set strict entry controls, clear every person and obstacle, and move only under guidance from a dedicated spotter. On a quiet clearing, one yellow strap turns a routine tree felling job into a hidden slingshot aimed straight through the work area. Do not stand in line with any tensioned strap, rope, or cable during felling. Route all rigging outside the escape path, keep it clear of the sawyer, and only tension or release it from a safe position. As the tree leans, it loads the yellow strap against a neighboring trunk, stretching it like a bowstring and storing energy as tension. When the strap suddenly slips or releases, that stored energy snaps the strap back along its line, sweeping through the exact path it was routed through, creating a high-energy travel zone wherever the line was originally placed. Treat every strap and cable like a loaded spring. Keep it out of your escape path, out of your work area, and only load or release it from well outside the line of fire. In a tight workshop, one misplaced reach toward a running machine turns a quiet cycle into a sudden pull toward moving steel. Never, ever place hands, tools, or hoses inside a machine's danger zone while it is energized. Lock out, guard, or fully stop the motion before going near moving parts. Rotating and cycling machine parts create pinch points where any object that enters the gap can be gripped by friction and pulled along with the motion. Once something crosses that point, the machine's drive force keeps feeding it into the mechanism at a steady rate, creating a fast, uncontrolled draw-in powered by the machine's drive system, far exceeding anything manual force can resist. Treat every running machine like a live pull-in hazard. Keep clear during motion, use guards and tools, and only adjust hoses or parts when the system is fully isolated. At a busy loading bay, one heavy slab slips from control and suddenly drops its full weight into the worker's space. Never, ever rely only on manual muscle to handle tall, heavy slabs. Use mechanical lifting tools, restraints, or stabilizers to keep the load under control if balance shifts. A tall, rigid slab has a high center of gravity and a narrow base of support, so even a small misalignment between lifters can shift its balance past the tipping point. Once that center of gravity moves beyond the base, and there's no strap or support, gravity takes over and the full weight drops in an arc toward the floor area, directly in front of the slab's base. 
Treat every slab like a freestanding wall, secure it, lift it with gear, and make sure no one is standing where the load would fall if balance is lost. On a quiet backyard patio, one stretch from a tall ladder suddenly turns the whole climb unstable in an instant. Always secure the ladder base, set the correct angle, and keep three points of contact. Never overreach from an unsupported ladder because a small balance shift can turn it into a sliding, folding frame. A shallow ladder angle reduces downward pressure on the feet and increases the horizontal force that makes them slide. As weight shifts outward, the center of gravity moves away from the wall, unloading the top support and increasing backward force at the base. Without footing or tie off, the ladder can slip, flex, and hinge, with the sections rolling away from the roof line as the frame loses support. Treat every tall ladder like a temporary structure. Lock the feet, secure the top, climb with control, and move the ladder instead of your body when you're tempted to reach. On a quiet roadside construction site, a vibrating compactor rolls along the curb's edge, turning an ordinary pass into a moment where balance and terrain collide. Do not run plate compactors along sloped curbs or unstable edges without solid footing, controlled machine positioning, and a clear escape space away from the drop zone. A plate compactor vibrates strongly and relies on a flat, stable surface to stay balanced. When its front edge climbs a curb or ridge, the contact point shifts upward and forward, moving the machine's center of gravity past the pivot edge. Once that balance is lost, vibration and weight combine to tip and rotate the unit, redirecting its movement away from the intended line. Treat compactors like hopping weights, keep them on stable, level ground, stay off edges, and plan an escape path before you start the pass. On a busy shop floor, one misplaced step on a pry bar turns a routine tire job into a sudden spring-loaded hazard. Use proper bead breaking equipment that controls stored force and never, ever position yourself directly above any bar or tool that could spring back. With the pry bar jammed under the rim and body weight applied, the bar and tire store energy like a bent spring. When the bead finally breaks or the bar slips, that stored energy releases and drives the bar upward along its arc with the same force that was pushed into it. Treat improvised leverage like a loaded spring. Use purpose-built bead breakers, control the force path, and keep your body out of the line of any potential snapback. In a narrow trench, loose soil turns still walls into a fast-moving surge of earth. Never, ever enter or work in a deep excavation without proper shoring, shielding, or benching. Trench walls can shift without warning, and unstable soil will keep moving until it fills the void. A steep, unsupported trench wall is held up only by temporary soil cohesion and friction, which vibration from an excavator or minor ground movement can quickly break. Once that support is lost, gravity pulls the soil mass into the open trench, and it flows inward until it settles at a flatter, stable angle. Treat every unsupported trench like it's ready to collapse. Engineer the protection, shore or shield the walls, and build a safe way out before anyone goes inside. Don't forget to share what you learned today in the comments. Your insight could save a life. Take care.